the ideal Ireland that we would have, the Ireland that we dreamed of, would be the home of a people who valued material wealth only as a basis for right living. We were a very poor lot of individuals. We hadn't much funds and we hadn't much assets of any kind. But nevertheless, we had people, led by Mr. Devonier, of course, who were full of energy, full of enthusiasm for starting this new party. Up the Republic, they raise their battle cry. Pierce and McDermott will play for you on high. Eager and ready, for love you they die. Devil and a Leo, soldiers of the Legion of the Rear God. Devonair's Fianna Foyle was made up of a lot of different people. It was a very brilliant uh, political party. It formed an enormously loyal organisation with an extraordinary internal solidarity. It appealed to me, well, I suppose, my family, and I married a family that were Republican and all Fianna Fáil. It appealed to me personally because it was the ordinary person and the worker and the small farmer and the people that their feet never seemed to leave the ground. A David man gone home from the fair with the cattle he couldn't sell. And someone shouted him, that's what you get for voting for De Valera. And he hit the, the, the beast with his stick and said, and we'll vote for him again, be Japers. All their organisation was made from the grassroots. And uh, I think uh, an organisation like that from the grassroots, you can't beat it. It is real democracy. The present government of the Irish Free State has been elected by a large majority for the purpose of putting into execution a program based on the deep national instincts of the Irish people. This program aims at restoring the unity of this island and creating an independent Ireland living its own cultural, economic and national life. Mr. Devonair regarded it as a constitution suitable for a united Ireland and said so quite expressly on more than one occasion. The option was for the British stay, leave it as a neutral as it was, or else invade Ireland to take back the ports. And we left the de Valera government to frolic with the German and later with the Japanese representatives to their heart's content. Mr. Churchill is proud of Britain's stand alone after France had fallen and before America entered the war. Could he not find it in his heart the generosity to acknowledge that there is a small nation that stood alone not for one year or two, but for several hundred years against aggression. A small nation that could never be got to accept defeat and has never surrendered for so. Here I'd give electricity to the countryside. Now here I am doing it for you all. We brought power to the mountains. We brought power to the glens. We brought it over rivers, lakes, and streams. We had every kind of hardship, but we'd do it all again. The pioneers who built the rural scheme. We were the pioneers who built the rural scheme. Think in terms of changing from protection to free trade. The civil servants under Whitaker had moved in to fill that economic void. That economic development was an epoch making document at the time. It was, I think, John Fitzgerald Kennedy who said that the role of the expert was to examine a problem to a conclusion, the role of the politician was to examine it to a, a decision. And indeed, it is the decision of the minister, the decision of the government which is the mainspring of activity in every department of government. 
He believed that government departments should be development corporations, his own phrase, that government departments should be active, should in fact act. The wheels are rolling in Ireland today. Machines, goods and money are on the move. You people, the people of our country, on the land, in industry, in the distributive trades, wherever you may work, are also moving, for the first time, into fuller employment, better living conditions and better social services. The major forum for your nation's greater role in world affairs is that of protector of the weak and voice of the small, the United Nations. We must at our peril use all the influence and power at the disposal of the United Nations to close the door of the nuclear club now. Messieurs les plénipotentiaires d'Irlande, s'il vous plaît. As a result of the effort put by Fianna Fáil into it and other organizations as well, including Fine Gael, I had the honour of signing the Treaty of Accession of Ireland to the EEC. I think that was a, a, a notable occasion. I had to prove we were fit. And at the same time, I had to prove to them we needed a lot of helps to compete with the other countries. But I was able to persuade them that, and we got a protocol that Ireland would get special assistance to deal with the competition. Free education was liberation for an entire generation of Irish school children and successive generations. The word radical was not in my mind when I framed these proposals which I have just announced in the doll. Um, I'm a realist and I had to deal with the crying needs of our young children who thirst for education so much. Mr. Lamas said that uh, a new type of patriotism is necessary now, and I think that it could be reflected simply by saying that all sections of the community must realise that they're part of the one nation, that we are part of the heritage of these people who fought for our freedom, and that unless we take advantage of it now by uh, submerging sectional interests and by ensuring that we can work together without suspicion of each other, whether on either side of the border or within either side of the border, unless we can do that, then I don't think we could be true to uh, the ideals of these people and we won't make any progress. And we will continue that policy in spite of any bully boys within or without the organisation. We can have elections for our officers, but we won't frighten Jack Lynch out of here by a few bully boys. Change it there, not over there. And fear the fall will survive as it did before. You can have Boland, but you can't have fear the fall. <laughs>